I was trying to think of a good way to wrap this thing up and I couldn't think of it but then I thought maybe I'll tell a little story about where I came from now I've been a service tech for a long time now I did install before that starting all the way back in 1994 but I know it wasn't too long ago that I didn't understand a whole lot about what was going on. It wasn't too long ago where I was just doing barely enough to make the customers accept what I was doing. And in a way, it's almost like fooling people. Now, I wasn't fooling them because I was trying to. I was fooling them because I didn't know the difference. And I didn't know what superheat was. I didn't know what subcooling was. All I knew is that I would charge the unit till it came out to a certain temperature and then I would see if the air was cold and if it was, I was done. Times changed a lot in the last several years. I remember I learned about superheat and subcooling from Goodman. Goodman had you know, their installations instructions that comes with every unit and they would tell you in the installation instructions how to charge the unit and how to figure out superheat and subcool and they would actually go through it line by line and I read through it and I learned how to do it but I still didn't understand what was going on I didn't understand what I was actually figuring up I just knew that I needed to have a certain amount of this and a certain amount of that but I didn't know why I didn't know that it was liquid refrigerant I was measuring I didn't know it was vapor refrigerant I was measuring I just knew that the book said this, so we went ahead and did that. Well, at least I was reading the book. <laughs> at least I was doing it by the book, so even if I didn't understand it, I knew it would end up working correctly. Now, time went by, and, you know, superheat and subcooling became a way of how you charge things. What's the superheat? What's the subcooling? But other things come into play along the way. What's the pressure? Now back in the day the pressure is let's charge it to 70 PSI and then we're done. But now the pressure stands for a little bit more. Whenever I look at the pressure it stands for is the condenser dirty? What is the delta T across the condenser? What is the delta T across the evaporator? How is that affecting the pressure? Is the evaporator pressure low because it's low in refrigerant? Because we're low in airflow? Because the evaporator is dirty? Or what reason is it? There's so much more than just a few numbers. And I began to understand it. Now I'm still going day by day and trying to figure out what things mean. Trying to figure out on another level. Trying to figure out airflow based on delta T. A formula to quickly and easily figure out how many CFM per ton you're going to get. I'm still working on that. I got one that was close, but not exactly accurate. And I'm still working on that. But time goes by and you become better and better technician if you desire to be better. I mean, you'll get experience either way. You'll learn how to spot things that are broken and fix them because you've had to spot and fix them before. But to take it to an entirely different level, you're going to have to actually want to learn and want to improve more so than the other people around you who just clock in and out and then call it a day. I'm looking to find the people that are those people that want to take it beyond what everyone else does. In a way that you want to take it where you understand the pieces of the puzzle and why they're there. You don't you just don't want to see a number on your gauges run a thermometer and then that's it it's all said and done as long as you got what you are supposed to get you're happy with it even if you don't understand it I want people to understand what it is they're doing I want people to understand why things work where the refrigerant's at what it's doing why it's doing it why it's not doing it and how to troubleshoot these systems now we've gone back and forth about tools and I'm not going to mention any more tools because this isn't about tools. This is about learning to do your job 
in an old school craftsman style. Become a skilled tradesman, not just a guy who holds stuff that has numbers on it. Rise above just doing stuff with technology. Accept the technology, but know that you are the most important part of the equation. I want to teach those people everything I know. That's the purpose I want to have going forward. Talon 875 will be shut down in one week. I want as many people to be able to see this as typically see it in a week. And then all the efforts go to the pro channel. The people that fit the description of what I'm talking about. The technicians out there that are looking for to find the why in what they're doing. Not just to be able to read instruction manuals and read gauge sets and read manometers and read whatever, but to understand why it's happening. I'm going to learn the whys as well. Now I've come a long way since I started, but I'm not anywhere near finished. So as I learn, I pass it on to you. And what I've got already, I'm giving you now. On the Pro Channel, we're going to be hitting that hard. Talking about all those different things that I've been talking about so far. Understanding air, understanding refrigerant process. But we're going to get into servicing the machines. The service videos aren't going anywhere, so we'll get a little bit of technical infield experience with particular brands and machines. But we're going to talk a little bit more about the theory. And if we can't understand and fill in the holes that when you go out on the job site that you know you fix something and you know it works but you don't know why it works or how it works you know the TXV is bad but you don't know why it's bad we're gonna see if we can't figure that out see if we can't figure out a little bit more with load calculation not just the fact that we can go into a program and it'll tell us how what the load calculation is it doesn't mean that you're gonna have to do your load calculations from scratch it just means that you have the power to understand the reasoning that is there. So if you are out there and you do need to sort of engineer something, you'll be able to. You'll be able to take building products and figure out what you need to do to figure out the heat transmission through those walls, ceilings, doors, windows, whatever. Not everything's going to be in a drop-down box in our trade. A skilled tradesman is going to have to take it upon himself to free think think outside the box and figure things out. It's like I always said, a hack and a genius are close. The line is very blurry because people have to do what they have to do to get things done sometimes, especially on older pieces of equipment, especially on special situations. It's just the way it is. It's not always by the book. And we're going to do some crazy stuff. I got mad scientist videos over there where we figure out how to put PSC motors on two-stage systems and how they work and shortcomings and the benefits and we're gonna do more stuff like that that's where the channels headed like I said there's a lot of YouTube channels out there for free and they'll still be there but I'll be over on the pro channel teaching those texts that fit the description and we're gonna go forward with that and I hope you guys join me I know a lot of you might not but I hope you do Take my words to heart. If that's the kind of thing you want to learn, it's the kind of person you are, then I encourage you to go over. A lot of times we forget that the technician in the field is the number one piece of equipment. And having him possess a good methodology, the ability to reason through these situations, to understand the process, go a long way and even troubleshooting something he's never seen before if he understands the process and the principle that he'll be able to figure it out so I hope you guys decide that's a good idea for you I bleed for my money day in and day out I try to give you you deserve but I'm just
just a college dropout who gives his weeks to break the mean falls in the tide line and is washed out to sea when I see the sunshine Right.